tell me about how you got involved with sort of the unschooling, homeschooling kind of world and, and, and then what, how you, your research has been, you know, what you've been illuminating through research in yeah, that community. Yeah, sure, sure. So I was a young mom and I was going to school and raising my child at the same time. Mm. And I remember literally in like 1999, there was a New York Times article about Dietschy and Ryan and intrinsic motivation. Mm. And I remember reading it and I remember thinking and at the time I was like finishing my bachelor's and thinking about master's level studies. And I remember thinking, oh, I mean, this is like the way I want to live my life. And this is also the way that I would want my child to live their life, mm. right? With mm -hmm. a, a real structure on doing what they love and joy and curiosity and interest. Mm -hmm. And I got it was such a gift to be able to witness that firsthand in my child, right? When you mm. have a young child, when you have a toddler, it's super easy <laughs> to witness intrinsic motivation. You witness it every day, right? Every day is like, oh, oh, right? This and that, and it's so cool. And so I really did a lot of like watching and observing my own son, mm -hmm. you know, really being interested in different types of things and the world itself and how it worked. and. Then we got into geology and all these sorts of interests. And by the time he turned five, I was uh, beginning my graduate studies, still studying intrinsic motivation and self-determination uh -huh. theory. And it was kindergarten time and there just seemed no need. Mm. And he was already curious. He was already like really reading and thinking about the world and doing all those cool things. In New York state, kindergarten is not mandatory. And uh, so right. as a single mom, I kind of just said, maybe we won't do this for the year and then we'll mm -hmm. just see what happens. And so that's exactly what we did. We unschooled for that year. Right. Mm -hmm. And it was so cool. It was like literally the best years of our lives. Yeah. And so we just made that decision over and over again. And while, so his first day of school was his first day of college. Right. Yeah. <laughs> he throughout his life. I don't think we meant to do that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> But, but really as, as he got older and not, you know, not that much older than six or seven, it really became a, a conversation and his decision. Do you want to go to school? Do you want to look at different models? Do you want to, mm. like, what do you want to do? And it was sort of like, yeah, I just want to keep doing what I've been doing, right? With a little mm -hmm. exploration in different school models and the teen years and things like that. But mm -hmm. every year he chose to unschool. Mm. And so while all this was happening, I was also doing research. Right part of my goal we had a lot of we had a lot of people that were really very <laughs> not supportive of the decision to unschool uh, because yeah. it was so different yeah right and here i was i was a young mom right so what did i know <laughs> right <laughs> so because it was so different my mother comes from a you know a, a background where she was a guidance counselor in a public school mm. and here i am teaching teachers and psychologists and right. this is really different right and so there was a lot of criticism and there was a lot of uncertainty. Mm -hmm. And I almost felt as I did my master's thesis on intrinsic motivation and in homeschoolers in 1999, and I did my doctoral dissertation later on, mm. it almost felt like my job was to legitimize this form of learning mm. for for pretty much myself and my family i just wanted to right like it wasn't this big educational experiment there was right, some right. you know and at the time there was no research on it right so mm. i was lucky enough to partner with peter gray for our right. big 232 family study of uh, unschoolers and you know everything that they were feeling i was feeling too as an unschooling parent but yet really putting on my researcher hat, because if it mm -hmm. was something that didn't work, I wanted to know, right? right? And I right. wanted to know why, right? And then we, we've we done a bunch of studies and I, I went off and did a, a whole bunch of studies on unschooling intrinsic motivation and self-determination theory and unschooling mm -hmm. and learning how to read and unschooling and students who are LGBTQ and unschooling and, mm. you know, students with disabilities. And so- right it's been a really cool research path that, you know, again, I, now it's, 
now people homeschool and unschool all the time, right? right Post pandemic, right. it's gotten so popular and it wasn't such a <gasps> word, but I yeah. mean, in the early 2000s, even in the 1990s, it was quite a thing to yeah. homeschool or unschool. Yeah. So that's what, I mean, I, throughout, I've always used self-determination theory mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. the, the framework beyond, behind unschooling. I've always thought it was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I wrote a book, you know, and, and that had a chapter about self-determination theory and unschooling. And um, I still think it's, it's, that's what unschooling is. It's intrinsically right. motivated learning. Right, right, exactly. This is the Agentic Schools Vodcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host, Don Berg.